and welcome to Carlos and Lisa. I'm Lisa Remillard. And I'm Carlos Amesquitz. Nice to have you with us. The census is coming next year. I'm sure you've been hearing a lot about uh, the census in the news and the controversy about one question in particular that President Donald Trump wants to add. The Are you a citizen? Of course, he has now kind of backed off of that. Um, mm -hmm. And there was a lot of, you know, it, went, it made it way, its way through the courts. It's still kind of going through the courts at this point. But the administration has backed off for now and has decided instead um, to print the census question there as is. They're in the process of doing those forms now. Without the without the citizenship without question, without the citizenship, I think question. the president wants to go a different way. But he's still going to he's still going to attack that citizenship thing, but in a different way and not use the census because it's a little bit of a quagmire for him. A little bit of just a little bit. <laughs> that's an understatement. I'll uh, hitch and get along here. That's yeah. an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's a lot of questions at this point, not just about the citizenship question, but the census itself. What is it? It is designed to, of course, get an accurate count of how many people live in the United States, but the results have wide-reaching implications. All right, so joining us to talk more about the importance of getting the census right is visiting, uh, visiting assistant political science professor at Redlands University, Lisa Pringle. Lisa, nice to have Hi, you here. Lisa. Hi, Lisa. So you, you heard that me. grand introduction uh, yep. to you and, and what, in our discussion about this. So first of all, what is the census exactly? So in case folks don't really know what that does. So the census is a requirement of the Constitution that we count everyone that's in the country in order to assign the number of representatives for the House of Representatives to each state. So we need to first know how many people are in the country and then each census, I'm sorry, each uh, representative district has about the same number of people. So then we know each state, how many people are in each, in each state. Is it interesting and that our founding fathers wanted equal representation for a, num a specific number of groups of people yes. so, that that, so that there would be a balance, right? Tell me about the, that thought process. So it's actually uh, one of the compromises that was made because the balance we find more in the Senate mm -hmm. because each state has two senators. In the House of Representatives, it's based on how many people that mm -hmm. live in that state. So it's actually, between the two of them, we have a balance. So the states that have a lot more people who live in them can't dictate all the laws for the whole country. But the small, each state has to have at least one member in the House of Representatives, even if they have one person that lives there. In they get, district. They, in the whole state. In the whole state. They okay. have a requirement of at least one member. Mm -hmm. California, with the biggest population, has the biggest number of representatives, but then that also leads into why the census is important for right. California. Okay, so let's talk about the controversy, because a lot of people have been hearing, I mean, this census has been in the news for the last month or so because of the president's decision to try and include the citizenship question. Of course, it's important that those that are here in our state in California, even the ones who are undocumented, get counted so we get the representation numbers that we have always had. Is yes. that a fair assessment of what's going on? Yes, exactly. Well, so the question that I have yeah. about that is, it's, uh, let's go back to the Founding Fathers. Yes. The Founding Fathers probably didn't consider that there would be non-citizens uh, in the census, but maybe they did. Maybe because not everyone had a citizenship card back then. Uh, the people were from Ireland, they were from England, they were from from Germany, wherever they were from, Italy, wherever, wherever they were from, they still were counted, and so they felt it was important enough to register that number somehow for representation. So was citizenship important or not? So that's actually a really good point. They did consider people who didn't have status, and that was the population that was enslaved. And so they didn't have any rights in the country. They were hmm. treated as property, but they were counted in the census, but at a discounted rate. So if oh, you really? remember wow. back to American government, it's the three-fifths compromise. Mm -hmm. So for every five people who were enslaved, they counted as three instead of the five oh, full five. people. So it's not until the 14th Amendment, which gave after the Civil War, mm -hmm. the outlaw of slavery, and so the 14th Amendment said we count each person as a whole person. And it says person, it doesn't say citizen. So the Founding Fathers included non-citizens, and the 14th Amendment didn't say that citizens only counted but Lisa, everyone. But, okay, so, so my question now is, with the, with the people who are undocumented in this country, mm -hmm. the, the mere fact of asking the question, are you a citizen, if they're undocumented, 
I have read and understand that that just the question itself would deter them from being counted. So how do you remedy that? Yes, so it depends on how we approach or you know present the way that we ask the question or like what's the information going to be used for. So there's communities that are undercounted in the census regardless of really what the questions are. And a lot of it is What communities? The immigrant community, communities that maybe distrust the government, they don't know what the information is going to be used for. They don't know that the census is protected information. That information that you give the Census Bureau cannot be shared with even other government agencies. It's private information. Um, but for communities that are not familiar with our government system, maybe are not fluent in English, don't understand what that information is for, yeah. then they're not willing to answer it. And then especially yeah. if it's asking about something that could put them or their family at risk, they're definitely not going to It's interesting that, it. that uh, you know, uh, we don't think about where, you, where a lot of our immigrants come from. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about uh, refugees and people who are seeking asylum, the, uh, many of them are fleeing uh, really difficult circumstances. And I've lived in those countries in Central America. And you see how much they distrust government. They don't trust it at all. Because if they turn on the government, the government can actually Perfect. kill you. Yeah. Yes. They will come out after you and hunt you down. So that's that's the, the mindset or the frame of reference that they bring to this country. And so when they're faced with something like this, uh, like paying taxes or getting a driver's license, simple things, a census, which is, as far as I'm concerned, pretty benign. Yeah. But in their minds, this is a, a huge question mark for them. So I see what you're saying is that they're, they're confused by that. And then, of course, this is a much bigger country. Well, but And then, of course, you have the administration that is saying build the wall, everybody's got to go, and then all of a sudden are you a citizen becomes a menacing question in their mind. Yes. And what does that do if they are not counted in the state of California? If they say, I'm terrified, even though it's not going to be there, there's so much rhetoric around it, they're scared in general. Mm -hmm. what, is the, what is the repercussion? So it, it would be that if they didn't fill out the census at all, they're not counted, and that California could potentially lose one of the congressional seats when redistricting or reapportionment happens, um, and another state could gain a seat because of the population, the way it's counted. It could mean also California loses resources that would have been allocated yeah. if they would have been counted. So. It could money, you know, yeah. Follow the, the money, <laughs> yeah. right? It's so it's so important, and so people should should or should not be scared to be counted. Should not. Should not be. Should yeah. not be yeah. scared. Yeah. I, I just I, wanted, I, I wanted her to. Yes. Say I'm getting that message loud and clear from her. Yeah. The to There's say no it. reason to be afraid of that, but the, but, the it, but we understand why. I mean, I think right. that's been very clear too. All right, so this is going to continue. Of course. So we want to talk again. Well, let's see once this thing gets it's resolved, closer. and then we'll see what happens next. Lisa, thank you so much for your time. Thank Great you. to thank have you here. Thank you for having me. All right, we'll be right back.